I am Darius Martin. I'm the HBCU scholar at St. Philip's College, and I have the honor of interviewing the president of St. Philip's College, Dr. Lawson, regarding Title III funding. And I came across Title III through a conversation I had with my advisors of the Collegium 100. And he mentioned that Title III is a resource that helps HBCUs. And I thought this would be a remarkable opportunity for our students to learn more. And so to start off with the basics for the students and people who don't know, what is Title III? Okay, well, good afternoon, Darius. And I'm excited to have this opportunity to visit with you uh, to talk about Title III. Title III is a federally designated legislation that has set monies aside for historically black colleges, HBCUs that were traditionally underfunded. And so it comes as a federal designation where the legislation recognizes that as an HB, as a HBCU and historically black college, Colleges were established when our students were not allowed to attend or participate in higher education with what we might consider mainstream or the white institutions. So as a result of that, we established historically black colleges to give higher educational institutions, higher education opportunities to people that look like you and me, people of color, to pursue degrees in higher education. So with Title III, that is a designation that says that we recognize that HBCUs have a viable purpose in creating opportunities for people of color, and particularly African-Americans, uh, Blacks. And during my time, it was colors to attend and participate in higher education. Mm, that's amazing. And so for our next question is, how does Title III benefit HBCUs specifically our students and our institution? Title III benefits has a great benefit for us because it allows us to enhance and to strengthen the programs that we have here at St. Phillips College and at other HBCUs. We are a two-year HBCU, but these funds come to us because it, and it allows us, when I say to enhance, to expand upon the program offerings, we're allowed to purchase additional equipment, additional resources, to have faculty and staff engage in professional development opportunities, to even augment the facilities that we have. So it, it enhances and it strengthens what we currently have. And this is how we have traditionally used the funds. So for students, they get the benefit of having a program with additional equipment and resources that can expand their knowledge uh, and their uh, academic experiences. For the faculty, they get to travel, they get to participate and grow uh, professionally by engaging in professional development opportunities that may not necessarily be available to them to the budgets that we have. So it enhances and strengthens the capabilities and everybody benefits as well as us allowing us to, as you uh, here at St. Philip's College and others, we have monies that we're able to invest in facilities and uh, renovations and creating new uh, facilities for our students to enhance the instructional delivery capabilities. So it's through enhancement and strengthening the resources that we currently have that Title III is um, there for us. Mm. Yeah, strengthening is a key word because as I was doing my research in preparation for this interview, something I kept seeing was strengthening HBC programs. And so this leads to my next question. What does it mean to strengthen HBC programs? Well, Darius, one of the things that is recognized and it's in the legislation and there's been federal court cases about this because I went to Alcorn State University and there was the Ayers case. Uh, and it recognized that state legislatures where there are HBCUs in existence, in my case, it's the state of Mississippi, they have traditionally underfunded the historically black colleges and they have put more resources into the predominantly white institutions. So it is, it is a fact that we have received less funding from uh, legislators and legislative bodies in terms of the support that's given to HBCU. So when we're saying strengthening what we have, that's what we mean. We're allowed to receive additional monies to augment 
um, the the um, the funding that we receive from the state and the federal um, legislation has recognized that yes there are discriminatory practices when you look at how much money you give to a white institution versus how much you give to a black institution. Mm -hmm. And in several states, in the state of Tennessee, in the state of Maryland, in the state of Mississippi, you can see that there has been federal court cases to offset and to recognize the disparities in the funding. So federal dollars have strengthened what we currently have and that's what we say by strengthening because they're recognizing that traditionally we have been underfunded, underserved when we're looking at how they make determinations and decisions about who gets what dollars in the state. Hmm. And for our last question, so you see in the mainstream media, you see NBA and NFL players coming out saying supporting our HBCUs. You see former NFL players coaching at HBCUs. So how does the attention from mainstream media help our HBCU students and our institutions? It is without a doubt that Deion Sanders has made a tremendous difference by making the decision to go to Jackson State University. That's in the state of Mississippi. The, his being at Jackson State has made a difference for all the schools in the state of Mississippi, as well as other institutions. Him being there as a performer, former professional athlete in I think two different areas, um, draws attention, forces the mainstream media, well not forces, but the mainstream media is now focusing in on Jackson State University. I recall Dion getting off a plane from a game and he's saying, he's looking at the media and he's looking uh, at checking his phone to check the scores. And he challenged the mainstream media saying, you're always reporting on the scores of uh, the white schools. Where are the scores for the SWAC student, uh, schools? Where are those scores for Alcorn, for Jackson State, for Mississippi State, Tennessee State? I don't see any of those. And so, the attention that he is bringing and forcing the mainstream media to look at themselves. And he's saying, I wanna see those scores. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, yes, 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 you're right. We need to do better. But there's also more opportunities to televise our games uh, for mainstream media, to individuals to see our games. Uh, and so with him being there, he has forced them to, um, they pull the covers off and look at themselves and saying, wait a minute, there's an opportunity here to do more for our HBCUs, our schools of color. And thank God he's there, uh, even for his son. Now that we know that they made a decision that the students can be played, paid for playing and they can reap the benefits. And so when we see how his son has handled that, it's also serving as not only a role model as a coach, but even a role model for players to develop themselves because not only did he take advantage of marketing himself, he made sure that all of his team members benefited. So it's just, um, there's exponential impact in terms of the opportunities for having former professional athletes at Jackson State, at Tennessee State to go home or to go back to, to an HBCU and say, I will take my talents and I will put them to work in an environment where the institution has been underrepresented, underserved, and it is making a tremendous difference. So uh, this is a good thing and it's making a difference. And I wish we would have more like Dion and others to come home or to come to an HBCU and to share with our students and then give a roadmap, a career pathway. This is how it's done. And then once you get there, this is how you pay it back and you pay it forward. Mm. Yes, uh, this has been an amazing interview and very much informative uh, interview regarding Title III funding. I would like to thank you again, Dr. Lawson, for giving me this opportunity to interview you. And for our viewers, for more information, you can go to St. Philip's College website and type in Title III grant admissions for more information. And once again, I am Darius Martin, the HBCU scholar here at St. Philip's College. Thank you. And I say thank you to you, Darius, and you too are a role model to our students. 
you fail to mention that you've also been a trustee. And so for others that are also listening, look up Darius Martin. There's a role model for you as well, a pathway to follow. Thank you again, Darius, and I enjoyed it. Uh, thank you.